welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we'll be talking about hemostasis. Hemostasis is not to be confused with the very similar term homeostasis. is a sequence of responses that stops bleeding and limits the amount of blood loss. When blood vessels are damaged or ruptured, the homeostatic response must be quick, localized to the region of damage and carefully controlled in order to be effective. Three mechanisms work together during hemostasis. They include vascular spasm, platelet plug formation and blood clotting or blood coagulation. When arteries or arterioles are damaged, smooth muscles in their walls contract immediately, a reaction called vascular spasm. This reduces blood loss for several minutes to several hours, during which time the other hemostatic mechanisms come into operation. The spasm is probably caused by damage to the smooth muscle, by substances released from activated platelets, and by reflexes initiated by pain receptors. Even though they have small size, platelets store an impressive array of chemicals in their granules. Platelets generally have two types of granules the alpha and the dense granules. The alpha granules contain fibrinogen, clotting factor 5, von Willebrand factor, VWF, fibronectin, troboxane A2, platelet derived growth factor, PDGF, and transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta. The dense granules contain adenosine diphosphate, adenosine triphosphate, ATP, calcium, serotonin, and epinephrine. The steps involved in the formation of platelet plug can be summarized as follows. Disruption of the endothelium of the blood vessels will expose the subendothelial collagen fibers. Von Willebrand factor then binds the glycoprotein 1B on the platelet to the subendothelial collagen. This process is referred to as platelet addition. Upon addition, the platelet undergo a dramatic change in shape, from a round disc to flat plate with multiple spiky protrusions. This allows the platelet to interact with additional platelets in the blood, leading to platelet aggregation. This change of shape and aggregation is often referred to collectively as platelet activation. Eventually, the accumulation and attachment of large numbers of platelets form a mass called a platelet plug. A platelet plug is very effective in preventing blood loss in small vessels. It can stop blood loss completely if the hole in the blood vessel is not too large. The final step in hemostasis is the blood clotting, also known as coagulation. It is a series of enzymatic reactions that culminate in the formation of fibrin threads. This reaction which is known as coagulation cascade, involves several substances known as clotting or coagulation factors. Most clotting factors are identified by Roman numerals that indicate the order of their discovery and not necessarily the order of their participation in the clotting process. These include factor 1, also known as fibrinogen, factor 2, also known as prothrombin, factor 3, also known as tissue factor or thromboplastin, factor 4, which is calcium ions. Factor 5, which is also called proacelerin, labile factor or accelerator globulin, ACG. Factor 7, which is also known as serum protrubin conversion accelerator, SPCA, stable factor or proconvertin. Factor 8, which is known as antihemophilic factor, antihemophilic factor A or antihemophilic proconvertin or antihemophilic globulin. Factor 9, which is Christmas factor, plasma thromboplastin component, PTC or antihemophilic factor B. Factor 10, also called Stuart factor, Proa factor, or thrombokinase. Fac factor 11, which is plasma thromboplastin antecedent, PTA, or antihemophilic factor C. Factor 12, which is also known as Eggman factor, glass factor, contact factor, or antihemophilic factor D. And finally, factor 13, which is fibrin stabilizing factor, FSA. There is no factor 6, and combination of factor 5 and factor 10 is also called prothrombinase or prothrombin activator. The coagulation cascade is made up of three pathways. The intrinsic pathway, which involves clotting factor 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. The intrinsic pathway, which involves clotting factor 3, 4, 5, 7, and 10. And the common pathway, which involves the clotting factors 1, 2, 4, and 8. The coagulation cascade can be summarized into three steps as follows. Two pathways, called the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway, lead to the formation of prothrombinase. Prothrombinase then converts prothrombin into the enzyme thrombin, and the thrombin converts soluble fibrinogen into a soluble fibrin. The fibrin forms the threads of the clot. The explicit pathway occurs following damage to the blood vessel. Factor 7 leaves the circulation and comes into contact with tissue factor, forming an activated tissue factor factor 7 complex. The tissue factor factor 7 complex acts as a tennis which activates factor 10. The intrinsic pathway begins with the formation of the primary complex on collagen by high molecular weight kininogen, precalicreine, and factor 12. Factor 12 becomes activated. Activated factor 12 then activates factor 11, which activates factor 9, 
Activated factor 9 with its cofactor, activated factor 8, then forms the tennis complex, which activates factor 10 to activated factor 10. The activated factor 10 from both the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways act together with its coke factor, activated factor 5, as a protrombinase which converts protrombin to thrombin. This thrombin then converts soluble fibrinogen to fibrin monomer, which is a weak fibrin thread. Thrombin also activates factor 13, which causes the polymerization of fibrin monomer to fibrin polymer, which is strong and forms effective clot at the site of injury. Once a clot has been formed, there are a number of mechanisms put in place to make sure that there is no excessive formation of clots. The first is the intact endothelium, which makes sure clot is only formed at the site of vascular injury when the subendothelial collagen has been exposed. The second is the fibrinolytic system, which occurs when tissue plasminogen activator TPA and activated factor 12 converts plasminogen to plasmin. This plasmin then breaks down the fibrin polymer. Also, protein C and protein S inhibit activated factor 5 and 8. Even though thrombin is a procoagulant, it also inhibits excessive coagulation by activating protein C. There is also antithrombin 3, which inhibits thrombin and activates factor 9 and 10. Finally, postacycline, nitric oxide, and adenosine diphosphate also inhibit nitrate aggregation.